We live, we live on Dan's Top Radio. Radio. I'm your host, Father Little Archer, with the Real Rap Radio Show. I am a special guest with me, Zanya Tienders. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Now, I want to start with the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, let the listeners know, how many books have you accomplished so far? To date, I have written 29 books. And let's go back to your first, first book. How did you come up with the concept to write your very first book? My very first book was written out of just a need to be closer to the Father. I grew up in the church, born and raised. So for as long as I can remember, probably early as two years old, I remember being in the choir and just an active participant in different churches and loved it, loved that time of my life. But it kind of became a social club for me, especially during my teenage years, um, we hung out on Friday evenings with the church. We went to fish fries. It was a true social club. And that's how I approached it. But as I grew older, and I would say about 20, 21 years old, it just wasn't good enough anymore. Like I wanted more than that. I wanted something more authentic. And I really do appreciate all the years spent in the different churches that I grew up in. I mean, I take nothing away from that. It was a very personal thing that I was experiencing that I needed more. I needed it to be real. I needed God to be real to me. So what I decided to do was kind of secret myself away for two weeks. And I took time. Uh, I, I thought about tithing my time and I figured out that it was like two hours and 40 minutes a day. So I wanted to commit to that, to tithe my time. And I did so for two hours and 40 minutes a day for about two weeks. Well, that first day, you know, I realized I had a plan to tie this time, but I didn't have a plan for the time. So I didn't know what to do with that time. And um, eventually I just picked up my Bible and I thought, well, I just might as well read it, you know. And I did. And I kept looking up at the clock like every 10 minutes or so. Like, what in the world? This is taking a long time. Why did I think two hours and 40 minutes would be short? That type of thing. But that next day... It went by like five seconds. And by the end of the two week time frame, because I really wanted to commit to it. So I did. I was up to about four hours and it felt like seconds. And I was completely and totally engrossed. And during this time, I had also taken notes of what I was reading. So I was getting a lot of questions answered personally, like questions I had while growing up in church and things. And I had almost a five subject notebook full of notes. And when I looked at it, I realized, oh my, well, that's a book. You know, that's plenty of material for a book. But that wasn't my initial thought when I set out to do that. I just really wanted a more authentic and personal relationship with my Heavenly Father. So I did write that first book. It's called A Place to Call Home, Volume 1, Understanding Your Identity in Yeshua Messiah. And that began my journey because that time frame of prayer and taking time to just spend time in the word and spend time in prayer, that never stopped for me. Um, I can't say there's still two hours and 40 minutes a day. It kind of varies, but it continued. And um, each time there's some type of book or notes or curriculum or something that's birthed out of the experience. So that was a couple decades ago. So now I'm at 29 books. How has your journey been so far? It has been an amazing experience. It started out with seemingly insignificant encounters. And I don't ever want to discount, um, you know, your personal day. Sometimes we go through a, per a regular day and we say hi to people and you, you might comment on, oh, that's a nice dress you're wearing. You never know when you have truly made someone's day. And I think that's how my journey has been because from the exterior, I'm always thinking, well, the class isn't that big. You know, I teach Bible studies and Sometimes the class is maybe like 10 or 15 people. But then, you know, one or two of those people 15 years later are calling me and telling me how touched they were. So the journey from exterior for me has been just a regular journey. You know, I'm going about my day. You know, I have a husband and children. I'm doing the normal things, not realizing that and just sharing the things that I've learned in my soaking prayer time and Bible study time, that it's touching the world. And that I don't think that was ever really my intent when I started out. It was truly for me, like I wanted to be closer to my Heavenly Father. But in just sharing that in, in my home, out and about, at the store, just just my everyday stuff, uh, many, many people have been touched and they, they tend to keep in contact to share that. So eventually I thought, 
you know, I have stacks and stacks of notes on my hard drive on my computer. Something needs to be done here. So that's how Torah Time Digest was born, really. And so far, what has been your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge is maintaining that relationship myself in the midst of trying to do other stuff because it's grown into a subscription service. It's grown into, um, you know, the monthly house of prayer meetings and there's other things that I'm doing, but I, I never want to forget that initial time when it was just he and I in the room, you know, just one-on-one -on -one with the father and reading my Bible and just connecting with him. So I think the challenge, honestly, for anyone would be to maintain your personal connection as you're drawing others and, you know, being out there before the world, like you still need to be filled. So that, that is an ongoing thing that I just want to be continuously reminded that I still need to be filled before you pour out, you need to be filled. Okay. And what do you think is the first step somebody need to take to be personally connected to God? I think um, the first thing is to ask. Uh, scripture clearly tells us that if we ask him, we'll receive and that whoever comes to Yeshua, he will no wise cast out. I mean, that's his promise that he will not turn you away if you come to him. And beyond that asking, it also says to seek. And that's kind of what I did when I set aside that portion of my time. And I said, well, I'm going to seek him in this way. Now for you, it may not be exactly that way. It could be a little different. It may not be two hours and 40 minutes a day for two weeks. It might be a lifetime commitment of, hey, 30 minutes before I go to bed or something. But it's a form of seeking. Um, another way to actually seek is uh, prayer walks. And I am a strong proponent of that, but I also live in an area that's conducive to that type of thing. But to just go on a walk and connect with the Father in nature, out in the open, that's a good idea. So once you decide how you're going to seek, I would say the next thing is to knock because that's the whole verse, ask, seek, and knock. And that knocking is that persistence that if it doesn't happen the way I think it will that first time, I'm going to keep coming. So that's the knocking, just being persistent about it until that river of life just bursts open for you because he promised it will. So it definitely will. The voice of the Heavenly Father is pure love, especially when you choose to linger in his manifest presence. Just choose to linger there. And the resources and curriculum that he's given me is for that purpose, for those who truly want to soak in prayer. And what I mean by that is if you're spending more than 30 minutes in prayer and um, you're not always going to be on your knees that whole time, you might be singing, you might be dancing. You might be writing. Prayer is a very creative thing, too. So you actually could be painting or drawing. Um, there are times that I've drawn the person while praying for the person. And even if you don't have that kind of skill, there's always something creative that would be birthed out of that. So soaking prayer, keep in mind, this goes on for hours. So you may not be face down or on your knees. So there's other things you can do. So that's why the curriculum is there to have, you know, like the time with the father journal. It's structured so you can write down what you're doing for this specific time in any revelation you're getting at that time. So it's something that is a lifestyle and I like to call it glory culture. And it's something that's available to us all. And it's kind of the next level in personal relationship. Because when you think about it, if you have a relationship with your spouse or your friend or your children, you don't want a relationship that you're just sitting and asking questions to that person all the time, or they they just always want something from you all the time. It's usually not a good relationship if it goes that route. I mean, there are times when you really just want to hang out with the person. And that's what uh, the Time with the Father curriculum and the Soaking Prayer journals do. It allows you to just come before the throne with no agenda, no personal agenda at all. You just want to be at his feet. You just want to hear from him. You just want to spend time in his presence, kind of give daddy God a hug and write down what he's saying to you. Anything that you're learning from the Bible verses, you might want to just be at peace with doodle art or painting or whatever you might do. And that's so important, especially during the age now where we are with coronavirus and we have a lot of outside worries. And this is a great time to just secret yourself away, 
determine to do it for yourself for an hour, two hours, however long it might be, and just be at peace with the Father there. I mean, you will have that overwhelming sense of love and sense of peace, and you will certainly come away full. So it's absolutely worth the time. Yes, the series is uh, called Torah Time Digest, and it is not just about the first five books of the Bible. Some people think, you know, the Torah, when I say that, that that's all it's about. It's not. It incorporates the Old Covenant and the New Covenant and the ancient historical texts. So ancient Jewish texts that were written during that time frame, things like Josephus, the book of Nicodemus, all those resources are pulled together. So there's a scholarly presentation of what the scriptures are trying to tell us. Now, of course, everything is spirit led. So I'm going to say for you to basically research and prove it for yourself. And that's why the Torah Time Digests are written in that way. There are 12 different lessons for each book. Each lesson is based on a theme. So if you have, um, for example, Blessed are the Peacemakers, if you have that one, each lesson is about how we can either be at peace within ourselves, peace within the brethren, peace, you know, in your community, how you can pray for peace in your home, those types of things. So it is Hebraic roots in the sense that we we do honor the Hebrew roots of the scripture. So I, I do use the Hebrew names of God and things like that. But I also want to bring the, to light the Hebrew meanings of key verses and phrases we say all the time. When you translate a language, you tend to lose a lot of meaning sometimes. So it's very important to read and understand the original Hebrew and original Greek. And that's another thing that Torah Time Digest brings to the table. You can understand those things a little better. They're broken down, they're translated, and then that makes what we're actually reading in English come alive even more. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to an inspiring author? Well, when I began to first write that book, remember, I didn't have a plan. I'm going to write this book. That wasn't the plan. The plan was I'm just going to spend time. So the notes I took, I um, organized them into outline format. And so when I determined to actually write the book, I wanted to make a commitment for that also. And my commitment was actually pretty high. I committed to five pages a day, but the book was written in six weeks. So I did five pages a day, but I'm not going to say definitely determined to do five pages. What I am going to say is have a plan, because even if you choose a half a page or one page a day, at some point you will be done. And that's the thing. And then there'll be times when as you get into the flow, you'll definitely write a whole lot more. And then also great writers are great readers. So certainly read other books that are in your genre, books that you're interested in, because you'll not just pick up writing style. I think um, that's very inspiring in, in and of itself to read writing from other authors. And then you will definitely, you know, be inspired to continue to write your own. But for the most part, have a plan. Stick with the plan. Um, mine was five pages a day. Yours don't have to be that many. How did you come up with the concept of five pages a day? Well, okay, so disclaimer here, Microsoft Word, I <laughs> I um, reduced the page size to six by nine, and then I did one and a half spacing. And I realized that when I did it that way, it wasn't that hard to come up with five pages, but if it was an eight and a half, 11 single page, um, single spaced page, it might've been a lot more content. But it just, I was able to write five pages in about an hour or two, so it was a decent amount of time to spend um, just organizing my thoughts, looking at my outline. Remember, I already had my notes and my outline done. So just to write it, it, was, it wasn't it was that long. And at the time, you know, I had little ones at home. I had a lot of other things going on in my life. And I thought I could actually do like an hour in the morning or I can find an hour in my day. So that's why I did five pages because that was about as much as I can do in about an hour to an hour and a half. And that's why it would be different for everyone. So it's really up to you. If you can only produce two pages during that time, then go for it. Because like I said, at some point you will be done with the book if you are persistent about it. Yeah, how did you go about uh, publishing it, uh, book cover, and getting it you know, out there? 
Well, my first one I did get help for because I, you know, it was my first one. I didn't realize, you know, all the things involved. But I actually discovered afterward that it's quite simple to get your your book out there if you want to just bypass the traditional publishing. I mean, by all means, you can go forward in traditional publishing as well. But if you wanted to bypass that, there's a lot of different resources for that online where you can self-publish your book for nothing. Really, I mean, even Amazon, you can self-publish and it doesn't cost you anything. As far as book covers go, if you feel, feel like you're not savvy with Photoshop or things like that, I have actually taken the, taken the picture from my own covers. So I would have a concept for the cover. I would either go outside and take a picture, take a trip somewhere, or if I had certain objects laying in my house, I thought that would make a nice cover. Um, cell phone cameras are actually pretty decent quality these days. So you can take a nice high quality picture and then just put your text over it and be done. So it can be as complicated or as simple as you want. And um, of course, beyond the cover design, you do need formatting on the interior of the book. So that's all about like downloading fonts and just making it the way you want it to look. But it's not an impossible task, just take small bites. And, you know, the cover, you know what your book is about. You know what you'd like for your cover to look like. You don't have to draw it. Some people do. But you can actually go out and take a picture. Go for a walk. You know, find a nice area. Go to the park. Take a good picture. Okay. So, so we, we have, have some more time. time. So would you like to talk about one of your books in particular or share more information? Yes. Um, Torah Time Digest is available as a monthly subscription service called Time with the Father. Now, in Time with the Father, you have anointing oil, you have a prayer journal. This is every month. You have a brand new Torah Time Digest with the 12 lessons. You have a workbook that goes with that. And then it's usually a free gift. Now, this um, this curriculum is usually going out to people who want like the home Bible studies and things like that. Or who just want it for themselves. It don't have to be a, a true scholar. Like You don't have to have a title or anything like that to study the Bible at that level. So enjoy, you know, those types of resources being delivered to your front door every single month. I mean, that's a blessing. In addition to that, there are e-courses online. If, um, you know, some people are not into paper and, you know, print books anymore because everything is electronic. So there are e-courses you can, you can take online and that also will enable you to engage with the book you can probably find the audio book version of it as well. But each one is meant to bring a greater revelation. So, for example, the most recent one for this month coming out at the end of May is the Blood Covenant and the Bride of Messiah. So it goes into all the principles of the Blood Covenant. It goes into the power of the blood, um, the Salt Covenant, if you're not familiar with the Salt Covenant. Um, that's basically, it's all throughout scripture, the salt covenant, but it's our covenant with other believers, you know, our commitment that we're brothers and sisters together as the bride of Messiah. So it goes into all of those different components, but it's all in one digest, the blood covenant and a bride of Messiah, a complete curriculum. And this is something that, I mean, if you're taking it to Sunday school, great. If you wanted to have a, your own online type Bible study, that would be fine. But it's a resource that you can use. Just add it to your library and it's worth it. In that particular digest at the end for the appendix, there are three bonus books. So remember I said I incorporate ancient historical texts, um, the Jewish texts and things like that. So there are three reprints of ancient historical texts for your own review because I like to encourage people to research for themselves and that's very, very important. Um, don't take my word for it type thing. Go find out for yourself that this is the truth. So I provide additional resources in the book as well. That's something definitely that you could take advantage of. In addition to that, there is a House of Prayer podcast if you um, choose to listen to the book. So they are recorded on a House of Prayer podcast. And there's also Table Talk with Torah. That's the second podcast where um, I have a, a group study, group Bible study, we like to get together and talk. So we'll talk about some of the topics that are presented in Torah Time Digest. And that's actually just a fun time, kind of just, you know, engaging in that conversation and and bringing out points and testimonies that you may not have picked up in the book because it's a very personal type show. So yeah, those are things you can certainly take advantage of. And if you feel like this might be like something that's way over my head, 
believe me, it's designed for that personal time with the father. Remember, that's the whole point of it, that you would draw closer to the father using these resources. That's the reason behind it. Awesome. I am available on my website, sonyatanderson.com. I'm also on YouTube, Sonia T. Anderson Ministries, my YouTube channel. Tell us one fun fact about you. I have seven children. I think that's a fun fact because people are wondering how in the world you get to write in all these books with seven children. I get up early, very early in the morning. Um, writing for me is um, very relaxing. So um, I, I enjoy education. You know, I'm also a teacher, so I enjoy education and I enjoy just every phase of childhood. And the the seven my my seven children use the Torah time curriculum for their personal devotions. Now my oldest is twenty six years old, so they actually use them, and I'm I'm blessed by that. So that's a fun fact. I have another fun fact. Another fun fact. <laughs> I like to sing, um, and I often get a lot of songs during my time with the Father, prayer and devotion time. So hopefully, I'll be able to record. A lot of those you'll see on my website that they are available for pre-order. So hopefully that it'll be done soon. Yeah. Nice. And mm -hmm. as we close out, any final thoughts? Yes. The final thoughts is basically thank you for listening. I want to thank you for um, engaging in the interview. But the, the biggest final thought is in the world that we're living in now, I don't want people to be so discouraged. I, I feel like there's a lot of discouragement out there. Just try to remain encouraged. And my biggest way to encourage that is to definitely take that time off where you're turning off the TV and just secreting yourself away and spending that time with the Father so that you can be refreshed and you can be filled and you can go forth energetic the next day. And try to write that page for love. Do something for love because remember, God keeps no records of wrong. So whatever you do wrong for the day, that's deleted, done away with, right? So do something for love and try to keep that focus that you're doing something for love every single day and um, make your contribution to the world so that we can have a more positive environment and a more encouraging environment for everyone. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank you for the interview today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Hold on one second.